Passive aggressive is your artifice Crying anomaly and unconsciousness Get away, I'm chasing you in the morning Coping with breakaway Pretty boy, forget your face Oh, a poet falls far from grace Try a past vital embrace Starting up a band is never easy. There's a lot of trial and error work that goes into making it all happen. We didn't know what we were doing. None of them did. I think I just texted both of them. We had, we had uh, I think that was like the one Christmas break that we weren't going anywhere on some insane trip. Uh, and so we were like, hey, we can go over to Max's house and, and Duncan and play some music. And, and it was in those three days when they came up with a name for their band. Um, uh, was just kind of came out of like one morning, woke up and, and Max was like, Hey, let's get to the adventure car. Let's go to the music store. I was like, Whoa, adventure car. <laughs> now I bet I know what you're thinking. Hey, wait a minute. I thought this was a documentary about babies on a half pipe, not an adventure car. Who are these people? Well, have patience. We're getting to that part. Not every band starts off perfect. And at this point they were still incomplete. It was weird because it wasn't full at all. Cause it was just guitar drums and Max would kind of be on whatever instrument he decided to be on. He would do trumpet sometimes. He didn't really know how to play trumpet. He was on trumpet. Unfortunately, Adventure Car was not meant to be, with several issues holding the band back, beyond the obvious fact that Max didn't know how to play the trumpet. Well, Adventure Car didn't really work because Max lived in Duncan, and that's like, what, three hours, four hours away or something like that? So, like, we couldn't really meet up ever. Um, and... We didn't really have a lot of structure, so like, it kind of was destined to fail at that point. Despite the troubles of Adventure Car, the band continued to move forward. We eventually started just kind of doing our own thing, still under Adventure Car, just me and Noah. And then that eventually led to like a spot where we knew we needed more, but we didn't really have any other band members at the time, so I brought on Nick and Jetty. It was super weird because I just got back from a trip and um, we were just more so playing music, trying to figure out where we were on like our musical levels and what we were capable of. And I feel like that then led into that, that upcoming fall in like October that really, okay, we can actually play music together and we know enough people to where we can get like something going. So that was in Babies on Half Pipe. So we finally reached the beginnings of the real band. But where does a name like that come from? Why are the babies at a skate park and what are they doing on a half pipe? Ah, shoot, I don't even know how it started. Like, cause it was a name we had from way back in the day, you and like- Before Adventure. Before Adventure Car even. Because it was more of like this almost comical thing where like, oh, but here's a name, Babies on a Half Pipe. We're like, huh, that's funny. And then we kind of like left it at that. Once we kind of formed our band more, we're like, hey, that's kind of a, it fits our genre, it fits our style a little bit more than some of the other names we had um, at the time, which we were originally Shiver Spine, but then we didn't like that. It seemed too serious, too, like, it almost felt more hard rock than we wanted. And Shiver Spine wasn't the only name they considered. They also considered several other names. Babies on a Half Pipe was the one they stuck with, as they felt it matched their unique musical style, one that only they could define. We used to call it like a surf rock, but now I would say it's like, it falls more into like a indie, like energy punk kind of feel. Like, I guess that's kind of how you would describe it, because uh, we're not like, we don't follow a lot of the cliches that normal punk music does, but so it's not like fully there, but it's not like, obviously super indie either, so like it's kind of, it's a weird mixture of the two, I guess. With such an unusual mix of genres in their music, 
one has to wonder where the inspirations for their songs come from. Well, I mean, most of it is uh, Noah throwing stuff together, like kind of on his free time, and then he would kind of all bring it together. Well, really, it's like you get really sad and then something good comes out of it. Um, <laughs> not, but, uh, but really, I, I, the creative process is like, I find something cool on guitar and I add some words. Or I stream of conscious, just write down a bunch of words and play something that I feel like fits these specific phrases and it just kind of goes from there. Usually he starts playing and then Jetty will play a beat uh, that kind of goes with it and then we kind of formulate it from there because uh, usually like the lead guitar, the stuff that I do kind of comes last because you know, uh, Nick usually plays the chords based off what Noah's doing and so it kind of, we all throw in different ideas too here and there just to kind of form it more and more as it goes on. So it starts off pretty, um, kind of like just a rough draft. And after all that hard work and effort they've put into their music, it finally paid off. On September 10th, they played their first show together as Babies on a Halfpipe at the Vanguard in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, check it out. Yeah, we got this song's on there. It's a bummer, but it will be maybe. It'll be on Spotify sometime. We'll see. With this being their first show together as a band, they played their hearts out and enjoyed their time together with other artists like themselves. We weren't really sure what to expect. Uh, the whole show thing was completely new to most of us. So I expected it to, we all go up sta on stage and get so nervous we can barely play and mess up all the time. Uh, but overall, like it went so much better than I could have. I don't think any of us imagined it to go uh, for our first show. The crowd was really into it, so that's always a plus, and uh, we got a lot of really good positive feedback after the show, and a lot of people came and talked to us personally about a lot of our songs. I really enjoy getting to know people like uh, like Richard from Second Glance. Dude, what a cool guy. Being able to do that was, was just awesome. It was a good response. It was a good first show. Like I would love to keep playing and keep getting more into the punk rock community here in Tulsa. And keep playing they will, because it wasn't just the crowd that enjoyed their performance. So, I mean, like, there was the manager of the show, he came up to us, and he wanted us to come back, um, and he said, make sure you guys don't leave without us getting your contact information and stuff, so that way we can get you back and get you out on shows if you want. And they're already on their way back to the Vanguard with another show coming up on October 28th. With their recent success, what future does the band see for themselves? So, like, at the moment, like, our goal is just to, like, keep writing and keep releasing. I'm kind of going at it with an open mind, you know, if something happens, great. If, something, if we just keep playing shows here and there, that's fun too, but, like, I'm just gonna, I would love to keep going and eventually, like, be able to go on tour. And that is the story of Babies on a Half Pipe. After a long series of hard-hitting interview questions, we decided to take things back a notch and have fun with our interviewees, so we decided to ask them some more laid-back questions. Mosh pits! I'll take I'm a riff guy. I like breakdowns, yeah. but... I do too, but yeah. Disney. Or cartoon. Oh, Cartoon Network, yeah. <laughs> Shiver's fun. I, I kind of like Adventure Card better, honestly. Bands. Bands. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm 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 going to say it. Are those shoes not bands? They are bands. Yeah, it's not bands. Well, actually, my hands are bands. Mario movie? <laughs> With Chris Pratt as Mario. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll like Jack Black as Bowser. Yeah. Or something like and then that. uh oh who is um Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. What? Yeah. Keegan Michael Key yeah. is supposed to be Toad. Toad. Yeah. I'm so scared. <laughs> it is the worst cast I've ever seen. It's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be amazing. Like, like, like think.